Hey muchachos and muchachas, today I want to talk to you about strength of a steel guitar string. Now if we're going to talk about strength of steel guitar strings, going to need a guitar. Got one right here. This is a Fender Squire uh, Telecaster. It's a nice little student guitar. I like it a lot. Made a few uh, changes to it up here, but it, it works just fine for what we want. And uh, we're going to need to have it in tune. <laughs> It's in tune. And this is very much a strength and materials talk. We're going to find out what it takes to break this string, the tension and by, by extension the stress that it takes to break this string uh, just by listening to its frequency. Alrighty? So before we do this, let's run through the, the uh, mathematical background to it. And we'll come back to this in a second. Let me just turn my amp off here so it doesn't hum. Okay, we're going to find out how, what force it takes to break a steel guitar string. And because I don't want to have to twist forever, we're going to break the littlest one. So we're going to need a couple of numbers here. The diameter of this string is 0 0.010 inches. Okay, its length is 25.5 inches. And uh, the density of the steel is 7,850 kilograms per cubic meter. Huh? Can we do that? I know these in inches because the American guitar industry still works in decimal inches. I know that one because the whole rest of the world knows uh, the density of, or works in the metric system. That's the density of steel in metric units. Um, I'll tell you right now, if you're going to try to run this problem in English units, you're going to go blind and crazy. You have to run this, this uh, calculation in uh, metric units. So I'm going to step out of frame for a second and I am going to let the blackboard fairy, the whiteboard fairy, take care of this for me. That's better. i got to leave some cookies out for the whiteboard fairy. So anyway, we're going to need a governing equation and that is this. Okay, frequency of the string. Now this is just the fundamental frequency. This doesn't have anything to do with the harmonics is 1 over 2L, where L is the length of the string, right there, squared of T over rho. Now, T is tension, rho is mass per unit length. This is not a density, it is what's called running mass, or mass per unit length. So this is the mass of the string, basically per meter. By the way, the reason we don't want to run this in uh, English units, apart from just reasons of good form, is that we're going to do this problem in pounds second in inches, most likely. And if we do that, the consistent mass unit is not a pound second squared per foot. That would be a slug. It is a pound second squared per inch, which goes by the name of slinch. I actually, early in my career, had to use the unit slinch in finite element analyses. Bad times, man. Don't want to go back there. So we're going to absolutely do this in uh, metric units. For the quarter of my viewers that are in the US, you might cringe a little bit. For the three quarters of my viewers who are outside the U.S., you're going to look at this and go, "Well, duh." Okay. So anyway, there you have, there you have it. I want this number, not frequency. So let's back that out. Um, let's see. Let's do this. Um, tension equals four f squared l squared rho. Okay. All I did was a little bit of algebra there. Now that again, mass per unit length. So let's. Let's do this. Okay, that's, and I'm going to call this the density of steel. All right, that really is volumetric density. So that is really kilograms per cubic meter. That really is that number right there. This is not running mass anymore. Times A, which is the area of the string. Right? So there's what we got right now. That's the governing equation. But it turns out it's kind of a pain in the neck to run this in, uh, uh, in terms of force, because we really want to stress. We want to find out what the strength of the string is. So that is tension over area. So I'm just going to divide that by area. And oh, look, area cancels out. So here's, can we get this down here? There we go. Um, There's the equation we need, and again, that's volumetric density. So there you go. We know the fre we'll measure the frequency with a tuner. Um, I know the length, and that's we, I know this, the uh, 
uh, mass of st or, yeah mass of steel volume volumetric density of steel. Um, last thing I want to know here is what is the yield strength of steel? Well, depends on what flavor of steel you're interested in. By the way, it doesn't matter which flavor of steel, which alloy. It's still almost all steel. It doesn't matter if you take some crazy 4130 OQT800 blah blah chrome moly steel. It's still like 99% iron. So that number is, is pretty universal. Until you get into things like stainless steel that have enough nickel in them, that really does might, might change a little bit. So this is um, in the neighborhood of 305 megapascals for just generic 1010 steel, 1010 mild steel. The furniture in my office is probably made of 1010 steel. The shelf bracket on the wall is probably made of 1010 steel. The brackets for my little LED lights here, those are, it's just, it's the stuff you buy in thousand ton lots. Okay, this is, this is the, if you don't know what else you're getting, you're probably getting this. So let's try something here. We don't need all this junk anymore here. You can have a, have a take a screenshot if you want to look at all this stuff. Okay, let's do this now. Let's look at our maximum frequency. Well, I'm going to need a measuring device. I've got my cell phone here. I'm going to make sure I got the the uh, tuner app loaded. Okay, this is my little tuner app here. This is one I uh, loaded off the web. It's free, so the price is right. And it has the advantage that right there, it tells me the frequency. So I, I couldn't see that because I was pointing at the camera. That should give me a frequency. Let's do this. Let's flip this on and give me some volume. And I should get about 329. Yep. Almost exactly right. That's the high E string, 329. Let's just break it now. That was 363. That was 398. at about 406. All right, so let's turn that off. All right, 406 hertz. That's about where it broke. It, when it was in tune, it was actually 3, 329.4, I think. Um, so let's do this. This is our experimental stress now. 4 F squared L squared Row steel. Okay, so four times four oh six, and hertz is actually cycles per second. So for our purposes here, it comes out one over seconds squared times zero point oops six four seven seven meters, and that's going to be squared times. Uh, Seven eight five zero kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, that looks pretty good. And because I just found that number just now, and I haven't run that those numbers at all, I'm going to step out of frame, and I am going to let the whiteboard fairy take care of that number for me. Love that whiteboard fairy. So anyway, 2,171 megapascals. Now wait a minute. Huh? 305, 2171. All right, if I multiply that by about, uh, let's see, 7 times 7 times 3 is 21, that's that number. Huh? Huh? How does that work? Well, it turns out the steel that these strings are made out of really is just steel, but it's something called A228 music wire, and it really is that strong. Okay. These strings really do operate at a very high stress level. And you notice when it break, it didn't stretch much. There was almost no plastic deformation in that string. It popped. Okay. That's a brittle failure. In order to get strengths that high, you have to li live 
with a relatively brittle material. This stuff, if this was 1010 steel, mild steel, okay, that would stretch out like, like taffy candy, okay, that just stretches forever. This stuff is called A228, it's called music wire, okay, it's, it's uh, treated so that it's extremely, it has an extremely high uh, yield strength, the ultimate strength really, they're almost the same in this case. And uh, in order to do that, you have to give up something. Well, what you give up is uh, plasticity. It, it just breaks. It's basically a real failure. Now, if you go on MatWeb, you're going to notice one thing. And here's a screenshot of MatWeb. Okay, take a look at those numbers. The smaller the string is, the higher the yield strength. How does that work? Well, in the process of drawing the steel, you create dislocations as it goes through the die, and the, 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 the uh, uh, entanglement of all those dislocations uh, makes it harder for any one dislocation to cause a failure. So the strength of the steel string, this music wire string, actually depends on its diameter. The smaller the diameter, the higher its yield stress, not its absolute force it can take. That's, that's not correct but the higher, higher its yield stress is. So there you go, guys. This is a simple experiment to measure the breaking strength in terms of stress of music wire. And we didn't use a test press or a universal tester or anything, just used a guitar and a tuner. So there you go. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.